This is a part two of this build. In the first part, we planned everything out and did a whole lot of talking. If you actually watched that and are here to see the build, cool. If you didn't, well, that's understandable too. So for a super quick rundown, the goal is to build a live view monitoring system to get video out of our camera and into an external display. To do that, we're using this wireless HDMI transmission system. This transmitter needs to be hooked to the HDMI out port on the camera as well as powered by an external battery. For the first of our field monitoring setups, the receiver is connected via HDMI to the monitor and both are powered off of a USB battery bank. The trick is that to make all these connections happen and to get our wireless video signal, we're going to need a lot of connections, well, via wires. The first field monitor is fairly straightforward since it only has these three components, but the second one, which will implement this switch and four receivers, is going to get a bit complicated. In order to help make all of this even a little bit manageable, we're going to need to build a couple of things. Instead of another entire video of talking, let's get right to what we're building, and we're starting here. The first thing we'll be making is a relatively compact and portable way to hold the transmitter and its battery to our camera. The goal is to use this system for a few different models, but our main recording cameras are these G85s, so we'll be building this mount specifically for these cameras. In order to get video out and for this little ecosystem to function, we need two wires. A micro HDMI male to HDMI female, and a USB-A to right angle mini USB cable. In terms of portability, this wire is a bit long and this one will need a bit of maneuvering. And that's where these two come in. We've tightly wound the HDMI wire into a bit of a snail shape. And in the same way, we have this micro USB cable tied in a specific configuration. I spent a lot of time figuring out the best position for all of this in order to have the camera fulfill the roles I needed to. I considered a side mount using the hot shoe up top because it keeps a relatively low overall height and it'll slide right into the hot shoe. The problem here is that the vast majority of the filming that I do uses a light attached to the camera, and this up top is usually involved with mounting the lights. I considered a bottom mount creating some kind of cradle that would have probably two quick detach connections and this and that, but either it would be offset really far to one side, it would interfere with the battery door, or it would just end up feeling a bit too bulky and make the camera more difficult to use with some of my mounts. The micro HDMI port is on the left side of the G85 and you're holding it generally from the right side so it makes sense to have it on the left. But anything going on over here also can't interfere with the zoom and manual focus operation of the lens. I'm not claiming it's a perfect solution, but this is the one I came up with. The transmitter and this 5000 mAh battery pack will be butted up against each other, this USB cable connecting the two in a relatively tidy fashion, and this HDMI cable coiled down towards the camera. This is the basic orientation that I want these to be held in. The screen can still be flipped out and articulated at least a little bit. They're out of the way of pretty much any of the controls that I normally use on the camera. So what we need to build is a bracket to hold that in place and still let us use this connection. To mount the bracket to the camera, we're going to use this hot shoe adapter that slides in and tightens down just like that. This is a cardboard template of what I think this bracket will end up looking like. The bracket will mount right on the threaded stud attached to the hot shoe, and this standard quarter inch thread cold shoe adapter can be threaded down on top of it. That way the bracket is held still, and we still have a place to mount an on-camera light. This is roughly what we want this whole thing to look like when it's assembled. Obviously, cardboard isn't going to cut it, so we'll be making it out of a 1 inch thick wide piece of 8 inch thick strap aluminum. This is going to involve drilling a hole, cutting a funky angle or two, doing a whole lot of bending, and crossing our fingers that everything goes together. So at long last, let's finally get to work.
And after all that, this is what we came up with. All that I actually took was bending and notching this strap of aluminum, but figuring out the angles and shape of everything took a lot of thinking. I'm pretty happy with how this little unit turned out, and it fits pretty well on our G85s. We could just slide our attachment into the hot shoe on the camera, tighten down the thumb wheel, plug the HDMI cord into the camera, and the USB cord into the battery. And that's it! The transmitter is powered up and ready to go. You can definitely feel the weight of it hanging off of the camera, but it's not so much that it's insurmountable. For now, I think I'm just going to keep zip-tying the transmitter and battery onto the bracket because it feels plenty secure and it's nice and simple. You don't even have to use a new zip-tie each time since you can just slide these off and slide them back into place. While it's assembled, the charging port on the battery is accessible, as are the power button and power LEDs, and the indicator LEDs on the transmitter as well as its control button. And we can still add accessories to the top thanks to this cold shoe that we installed. Unfortunately, with the battery on the inside, it's a little bit too tight for even these small video lights. But we're easily able to flip the battery to the outside for a slightly less compact unit, but you can fit even these larger LED lights on top. So all in all, I feel pretty good about this simple yet flexible mounting solution. We probably won't make specialty mounts like these for the rest of the transmitters, we'll just zip tie them to the tripod or whatever as we go, but at least we have portable and fairly compact rigs for our two main cameras. But of course, as much as I want to, it's not time to celebrate just yet. This part of the system is only half of the equation, and, well, this was the simpler half. What we have to do now is make our fueled monitors. Or, since we already have the monitors, I guess I should say we're going to make the housings. If you watched the planning video, we have, well, pretty detailed plans on how we're going to do this. And everything is kind of based around the four Visa mount screws on the back of this monitor. This is a 75mm standard size Visa mount. We're going to build off of these mounts and use them to attach two pieces of sheet aluminum, which we'll be mounting the other components to. It's probably impossible to make out anything from these plans, so I hope it makes more sense as we go along. But to build one of these, there are five main components we're going to need to make. First, we need to make spacers so that we can bolt the two plates together and have an actual structure. For that, we'll be using some of these solid half-inch aluminum dowels. Next, we need to make standoffs for the receivers so that we can bolt them into place using the tripod screw mounts on the bottom, but not block all of these airflow ports. And that's where these aluminum 3 quarter inch solid dowels come in. We'll also be making a handle to make the whole thing much more portable, and that'll be made out of this 3 quarter inch wide, 16 inch thick angle aluminum. This angle will hold the handle itself, which will be a 3 8 inch bolt at the center of some 3 quarter inch inner diameter PVC pipe. We'll also need some hold downs for our batteries and our HDMI switch, which we'll be making out of the rest of this 8 inch thick, 3 quarter inch, and 1 inch wide aluminum. And of course we've got some screws to hold the whole thing together, and this Visa mounting plate for the back of the whole thing that we'll talk a little more about later. But what about that fifth thing that I said we needed to make? Of course, that's the plate aluminum that will be the structure of the whole assembly. But, where is it? Well, I ordered some 16 inch plate aluminum over a week ago, and it got stuck in the mail. The tracking has been stuck on pending acceptance for several days. I really need to have this thing working to use it this weekend, so I had to come up with a backup plan. I couldn't find any places locally or online that could guarantee that I could get a piece of plate aluminum fast enough. So I went looking around for things that I could get next day shipping for, and this is what I found. I ordered a few good old fashioned road signs. These are aluminum, and the Amazon product page matched exactly what I was looking for, including the next day shipping. Well, I thought so until this morning when I received the sign, and this is only 40 thousandths of an inch thick. The listing claimed 63 thousandths, or a sixteenth of an inch, which is what I was planning to make the housing out of to keep things lightweight. But that thickness was already cutting it pretty close. I don't think there's any way I could use 40 thousandths and not have issues down the line. So these signs were the Hail Mary, and that failed too. So what do we do? Well, I really didn't want to have to do this, but I can think of one other piece of plate aluminum I have sitting around that could work. 
It took almost three hours of prep to get it to this point, but this slightly banged up piece of 100 thou thick aluminum should work. I double checked and there is enough material here to make the four pieces of the housing that we need. This is a little bit thicker and heavier than I wanted the housing to be, but at least it's still less than an eighth of an inch and most importantly, it's actually here. Since it's banged up and I kind of wanted to save it for something else, this isn't what I wanted, but in the end it'll be a slightly stronger housing and since this is actually more material than what I had originally ordered, there's a little bit more over-designing that I think we can get away with. We're finally ready to start building these units, but we're not going to start here. We're going to start by making our housing spacers and receiver unit standoffs. The process to make both of these is the same. We'll cut the dowel into short sections and drill all the way through. The housing spacers will be drilled for our quarter inch 20, two inch long housing screws. And the three quarter inch dowel will be drilled for our quarter inch 20, three quarter inch long receiver mounting screws. The housing plates will be one and three eighths inches apart and we'll be needing around 12 of those in that length and four in a shorter length of one and five sixteenths of an inch to compensate for the aluminum angle that will mount our handle. And the receiver standoffs will be cut to be half an inch tall. So let's get back to work and figure out a way to whip those up. Okay, that was annoying and laborious, but here we go. We just finished making all of the spacers for the housing and for the receivers. I decided to go ahead and make a spare of each of these, partially because these monitors should be easily disassembled and if something gets lost, well, we already have a spare on hand. For now, we'll set these aside and get to work on something else. The next thing we're going to make are the hold down straps for some of our components. To hold the HDMI switch in our four receiver unit, we'll use this one inch wide eighth inch strap bent around the top of it and use to hold this down to our housing plate. We'll also be doing the same thing to hold down our batteries. Between the two units, we'll have three of these batteries, so we'll need three identical strap hold downs. For those, we'll be using this three quarter inch wide eighth inch strap. The idea is the same as with the switch. We'll have the strap across the top bent down and bolted to the housing plate. I considered using two of these straps, but I think that's maybe a little overkill and one will probably be able to hold these batteries just fine. We can always add a little piece of rubber or gasket material to help this grip the battery later on. So that's the next step towards our goal. Let's get to work. Well, we sure did bend this strap and only upon seeing it did everything kind of click and I realized that's not going to work. 
We're going to cut the housing nine and an eighth inches long and the switch is so wide there's not going to be enough room for the strap to be bent like this and bolt it down. So instead of having it bent, we'll just have it go flat across the top. I think the best thing for structure and stability would be to have more spacers in between this strap and the base plate. But while I decide how much energy I want to spend on this, we'll cut the strap and drill the mounting holes in each side. Okay, so there's our hold down for the switch, and I think we're just going to leave it at that. Could try to make spacers for it, but they uh, actually end up getting a little too close to the body of the switch, and I think it'll be just fine not having them. I could always add them later in the future, but I think right now this is all we're going to use. Now we'll get started on making the three battery hold down straps. These have a bit more wiggle room, so we will be bending them over the edges of the battery. And here we have all of the little hold downs that we made. These battery hold downs aren't the prettiest or the most uniform, but I think they will be okay. The idea was to have one slightly longer side and one slightly shorter side so that this side can stay tight and this one can be loosened so the battery can be removed by only loosening one of the two screws. I don't think the batteries for this setup will have to be changed at very often and it's probably not an on the fly kind of thing. But I also haven't really done battery life testing, so I'm not sure how long everything will real world last. So it would be nice to have the option of removing the battery without it being a whole ordeal. With all of our hold downs finished, the last thing we need to do before we can tackle the plates are our handles. The construction of these will be very simple, and it's something I've had success with before, so we're just going to keep using it. The aluminum angle will make up the bracket that holds the handle itself to the housing. The bolt will be connecting the two sides of the bracket as well as being the base for the handle itself. Last time I made a handle like this I used this 3 quarter inch ID PVC, but now looking at it I think I might try using the half inch inner diameter PVC instead. We'll add just a touch of padding to the outside of this and that'll bulk it up a little bit without it being too big because I don't want the brackets extending it outwards from the monitor housing to be too long. These bolts are five and a half inches long and our angle is a sixteenth of an inch thick, which means the handle will be five and three-eighths inches wide. 
it seems like it'll be plenty, even though I originally intended this bolt to be six inches long, but I couldn't find any. I think five and a half will still be just fine. The actual construction here is very simple. We'll just cut the angle iron, drill it for two mounting holes, install our bolts, and get the PVCs situated. Here we have the basic setup for our handles. In hindsight, I probably should have gone with eighth inch angle and just did some clearancing and got a little creative to make the bolt fit. The main reason I didn't was that it would have been hard to get the bolt head to clear the angle without going with an even larger piece, which to keep the handle as unobtrusive as possible, I didn't want to do. I also decided not to add any padding to the handle just yet. We're just gonna wrap some tape around it and see how that does. I considered using a piece of 3 8 inch and then 5 8 inch rubber hose over the bolt as a handle, but there are two reasons I wanted to stick with the PVC handle. The first being the PVC is rigid and this will become a structural part of the handle once the bolt is tightened. The second is that, again, I want to keep the overall footprint and the extension of this handle bracket as low profile as possible, and since the inner diameter of the PVC is larger than the bolt, this will let us change its offset. I'll be able to position the PVC handle exactly where I want it on the brackets. Specifically, I want it to be centered on the end of the bracket. Since this is a regular hex bolt and we'll need some space on either side to actually tighten it, we can't place it too close to the perpendicular face. And if the angle was centered on the bolt, it would be offset by a little bit like this. But since we can adjust the centering of the handle, we can center it to the bracket instead of the bolt. Which, yeah, is really a minor detail, but I think it'll end up being a lot nicer. In order to keep the handle offset, we probably could just tighten down the bolt, and I doubt it would go anywhere. But to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, we need to space out the bolt in the handle. To do that, we're going to cut some 3 8 inch rubber hose and use that as a spacer along one side of the bolt. I did a little fitment test and I think it's going to be a tight fit, but it should work. So let's go ahead and try to finish the assembly on the handles.
And after all of that, here we have our finished handles. The tape provides a nice grip and they're tightened enough that the PVC is a structural component here, so they're pretty rigid. I'm feeling pretty good about how these turned out, but let's do a quick test of how rigid and solid this actually is. Okay, I think we can call that pretty rigid. I'm not seeing any deflection or movement in our aluminum angle at all. And this car battery is certainly a fair bit heavier than either of our displays will be. So we've got our handles finished, our hold down straps, and a small mountain of spacers. So unless I'm forgetting something, which is possible, those are all of our main components except the plates for the housing themselves. For the amount of explanation and work that's gone into this project so far, it might not seem like a lot, but we've made pretty big progress here. To keep the length of these videos reasonable, mostly for editing purposes and also to keep some kind of a release window, we're going to end this video here. There's still a lot of work left to do, but by the end of the next video, we should have two complete field monitors.